it's it's I've been here almost 20 years myself. Um, so I mean, it's just it's an incredible company. Um, I, I really can't say enough good, and that's not from a recruiting standpoint. That's just from, you know, my own personal experience here. We right. just have an amazing team of drivers here that um, they care. They're kind of a cut above. Yo, and I'm back. Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Lockout men makes the call. Yo, I am here at the Loves. This guy finished taking a shower, getting all that good shower in. But check this out, y'all. Check this out. Yesterday, I'm driving. I'm bouncing, going up the street, worrying about my hands and everything. But um, I'm bouncing, going up the street, and all of a sudden, my phone rings. And I'm going like, okay, who's this calling me while I'm driving, you know? So go ahead and answer the phone, hook it up on speaker, and chopped it up. Yo, the call, caller says, yo, this is such and such from... FTC Transportation Inc. And I'm just wondering if you're interested in an over the road position. And I'm going like, FTC, who are you guys? Well, we are the Feed the Children um, Foundation, but we are carrier for the Feed the Children char uh, charities. I believe the Feed the Children charities is like, you know, uh, this 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 charity that goes all over the world helping out survivors of uh, of of whatever situations they was in, like hurricane survivors or um, uh, weather survivors or whatever whatever they just their charity out here, and they they have a trucking company. I haven't even heard of these guys, let alone seen their trucks. So I'm not even sure if they're out of the West, Midwest, South, East, whatever. But the young lady yesterday told me, yo, um, we, uh, we, you know, we drive all over. So I got the email. She sent me the email and the email is right here. And it says uh, OTR safety professionals needed uh, $2,000 sign on bonus. They pay holiday pay, vacation pay, 401k will match quarterly bonus late model equipment medical dental disability and insurance and they are and they're voted 19 i mean 2019 best fleet to drive for and down at the bottom seven consecutive years as best fleet hmm. i haven't even heard of this company i haven't even heard of this company yo let's flip over to the uh to the uh website and get a little bit more information so about this this is an organization feed the children exists to end ch childhood hunger it's the cause upon which we were founded 35 years ago and on and the one that we continue to fight for each and every day we know it takes the power of many to end childhood hunger for good. We connect donors, experts, partners, leaders, community, and communities to attack the problem from all angles. We are taking a stand and we will not rest until we end, until every child has enough to eat. That's, that is simple, straightforward, and sounds like a good company to work for. I mean... I don't know. I was just given the call yesterday. So today, we're going to call them today. Let's see what Safer got to say about Feed the Children. All right. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything on, uh, on FTC transportation. So let's go ahead and get this young lady a call. FTC Transportation. How may I direct your call? Good morning. May I speak to Emory, please? One moment. Thank you. Good morning, FTC. Yes. May, may I speak with Emory? This is Emory. How can I help you? How you doing, ma'am? This is uh, LaShawn. I'm returning your phone call from yesterday. Hey, 
here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing? I am fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got a chance to go over your email that you sent me. And okay. I also got a chance to go to the uh, website to get a to get a little bit more information about the uh, about the company because I'm I'm not familiar with you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with with uh, with uh, what you guys have uh, have available. So I sure. first thing first, I, I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me. So thank you. Uh, no problem. So, uh, feed the children, um, 35 years, huh? Yes. Yes. Um, so that's probably why you don't know much about us. Um, we have been around, um, and we have won both state and national safety awards, um, as well as being named to the best fleets list, um, which they only select 20 carriers in all of North America. And I think we are one of the smallest, if not the smallest, carriers selected. Usually they're larger carriers. Um, but we've made that list the last seven years. And um, a lot of that just comes from um, once we have a driver here, typically um, we have a, a really good retention rate. Our turnover mm -hmm. is really low compared to the industry averages. Um, I think we're right around 25 to 30% turnover right now. Um, and if you see the industry averages for fleets our size, um, you know, they're somewhere around 75 to 80% currently. Um, mm -hmm. So we have very low turnover here. We've got good retention of our drivers. Um, the biggest part of that um, is actually attributed to our dispatch team. We have two full-time dispatchers mm -hmm. and then a director of dispatch. And between the three of them, they take amazing care of our drivers, making sure they get the miles they need, the home time they need, just seeing to their needs. So if they need to be home, for instance, for, you know, a kid's school play or a doctor's appointment or a wedding or, you know, whatever that may be, they work really, really hard. Not to say that we never miss anything. It's still trucking. There's still logistical right. issues sometimes right. trucks break down loads fall through kind of thing but they work incredibly hard 24 7 to make sure that our drivers are taken care of so they're the biggest part of that um, we also have an amazing payroll um, coordinator um, who makes sure she checks and double checks payroll she calls our drivers if there's a question our drivers are paid every week through direct deposit mm -hmm. every Friday so we don't hold anything back. Everything that's turned in by Tuesday at 5 is paid Friday of that week. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we just we have a really good team. We have a great maintenance department, two full-time mechanics, and then a director of maintenance. And um, we do our truck services and our trailer services here in-house, as well as a lot of the repairs and things, so that we're not having to send them out, wait on Freightliner or wait on whoever. They're able to do quite a bit of it here. Again, it's still tracking. There are times that the trucks go to Freightliner, they go to Thermo King, they go to wherever, you know, and we have to wait, but um, they do a really good job at maintaining our equipment and keeping the wheels rolling. So, okay. um, so just, it, it's, I've been here almost 20 years myself. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it, it's an incredible company. Um, I, I really can't say enough good. And that's not from a recruiting standpoint. That's just from, you know, my own personal experience here. We right. just have an amazing team of drivers here that um, they care. They're kind of a cut above the typical um, drivers out there. Um, you know, they care about safety. They are working extremely hard. And, and what we do for Feed the Children, you know, they're here a lot of times for that reason. Not everybody is. Some people are here because it's just a driving job for them. Right. Um, but a lot of our drivers are here because of what we do for Feed the Children um, and the mission that we have there. So, um, but we work really hard aside from all of that to just take care of our driving force. So um, so feed so feed the children. Uh, that's a that's a charity, or I mean, so feed the children. Feed the children is a charity. They're a nonprofit organization, and um, they're actually across the street from us. We're in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. um, so they're kind of kitty cornered from where we are. Um, we are their trucking company, so that's the reason we're in business. Um, after they had been in business a little while, they decided that it'd be a lot easier if they had a trucking company to help get them get the product out to where it needs to go in a disaster or hunger relief situation um, so they developed FTC transportation now um, we are not nonprofit and the reason that we don't fall into that category is because we also do broker loads or third right that's loads. what I was about to ask so do you guys right. do other than other than priority loads for 
feed the children you guys do outside loads for we for do. other for other companies as well we do and the the main reason for that we're not a company that's set up to make a big profit you know our president's not driving a mercedes there's no shareholders or anything like that um, but we're set up to serve feed the children we use those third party and brokered loads to help pay for the bills, the, right, the insurance, balance. the electric bill, that kind of thing. But also it takes care of our drivers so that you guys aren't just sitting around for days or weeks waiting for the next Feed the Children load either. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so that our drivers are able to stay busy and keep running. So that's it's kind of a two-fold part with our third-party freight. But it, they all of our customers know that if something happens and Feed the Children needs us because we only have 30 trucks, the likelihood is we're going to cancel a load, and we have relationships with those customers. They know who we are, they know what we do, and they know that when disaster strikes, we're likely pulling some of our trucks off their loads. All right. So, so, th- so this is so this isn't this isn't uh, I want to say this isn't a, a starter company. You you guys no. uh, don't no. have uh, don't for like drivers that don't have CDLs you you guys don't train no. them for their CDLs this is a no how many no. how many years of experience you guys want for for uh drivers um, um we need to have two years experience um if somebody has a clean record at 18 months i can <laughs> present it to insurance and get approval um you know if, if we're even close to 18 months, a lot of times they'll go ahead and give approval if we're looking good on the application part okay, of it. But, okay. um, you know, typically two years is what we're looking for. So 18 months to two years. Um, we, we want a good safety record. It doesn't mean that if you've had a speeding citation or, you know, a, a stationary object incident, you know, a year or two ago, we'll, we'll still look at that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we, how, we take everything into account. So. How about, how about uh, what's, what's your policies on felons? What's, what's your policies on that? On what, I'm sorry? On felons. I.e., I am not a felon, but I'm just curious to know what's Oh, your okay. You said felon. I thought you said selling, and I'm like, selling what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> on felons. Um, well, um, part of it depends on, the, and we look for it to be over 10 years. Um, if it's been less than 10 years, it really boils down to what type of felony. Obviously, because of who we are and what we do, if it's right. anything related to a violent crime or to a crime against children, um, that's an absolute no yeah, for us. You guys don't um, want nothing to do with that. Right, considering right. Considering what you guys is about. Right. So um, it really boils down to, and we actually go through our legal department or feed the children's legal department on that um, as far as um, types of felonies but on the criminal history because we, we really examine those closely. Um, right. Currently, <coughs> I don't know if we've if we've got anybody that has any felonies on the record, they would have been over 10 years ago currently, so, um, and probably more like 20 years ago or so. Um, okay. I think I had one, which it was kind of a weird, I don't even know, <coughs> I don't even know if it was classified as a felony, but a guy um, had stolen a bike back when he was like 18, 17, something like that. That's a felony? Um, I don't know if it was a felony, but he listed it under on his application. Um, so okay. I don't know, and I never, I ne- it didn't even come up. So I'm assuming it was not a felony because it didn't come up on his background, but he listed it under there. So, I mean, obviously, there, there's well, he didn't want to lie. Of, he, he didn't want to lie right. because I'm Any assuming. Any kind of criminal. Right. Any kind of criminal history, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony, we, we, we want to take a look at that. Right. Um, just again because if anything were to happen we're here for feed the children and if anything were to go wrong let's say we hired somebody they were involved in an accident um that has nothing to do with a feed the children load has nothing to do with an event um has nothing to do with even what the felony was about that still comes out of you know ftc transportation feed the children's trunking company had a felon and now they've had an accident you know how the right. news plays all of that right. stuff up exactly so so we always want to be careful it also doesn't mean that we don't want to give second chances though because um you know people do turn their lives around things do change so we we try to be open-minded um we just proceed with caution so okay. so, so every driver every application is treated very independently um, because we're small we're able to do that i'm looking at every application i'm the one that processes them i'm the right. director of safety here i process them i take them all the way from start to finish and then at the end of that i meet with our president and between the two of us we make the decision so how how long's the how how long's the process what's what, what's the process time from from um, start to finish 
Um, it kind of depends on your past employer. Sometimes past employment histories give me a, a headache. Um, they don't come back as quickly as I need them to. There have been days where I've been able to do an application within a day, like within hours. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also times where it's taken me, you know, a week because of past employment. Now, wow. if I'm getting stuff back and things look good and I only have like one employer that's holding out or something like that, yeah, that we won't hold you up for that. Yeah we, okay. yeah, we won't hold you up for that. So if everything looks good, basically we do what's called a conditional offer. We're going to make you the offer based on what you've told us on the application and based on what we have so far. And then you know, you'll get to orientation, and if for some reason you're in orientation and somebody sends us something back and says, man, this guy wrecked every piece of equipment we handed him, right. and he popped positive on a drug screen, and he stole this, or, I mean, like, obviously we're going to cut you loose at that point. But 99.9% okay. .9 of the time when somebody makes it to our orientation, they complete orientation and go on to work for us. We're not, we don't bring in 20 people on Monday for orientation and then cut 19 of them loose. We don't do that. If you come to orientation, you're as good as hired at that point typically. So during, so during orientation, uh, can, can we... Can we take care of all pre-employment, uh, all pre-employment issues such as uh, uh, drug testing yes. uh, and stuff like that? Can we take care of all of that before we come to orientation? Um, it depends on. Uh, we use a local clinic here in Oklahoma City near our office for our drug screen and DOT physical. So we do those the first day of orientation. Oh, okay. Now okay. there are some um, training modules and things like that that I have available online that you can do ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of what we do in orientation is meeting. Uh, the way our orientations is set up, you're not just sitting in a classroom watching videos. There are videos, unfortunately, so right, I can't right. take that out of the equation. But a lot of our orientation is geared around actually meeting with different um, people, with different departments. So you're okay. going to meet with dispatch. You're going to meet with maintenance. You're going to meet with payroll and benefits. So you're sitting down and going through stuff with them. A lot of it is hands-on where we're, you know, you're going to go do a couple of drives. You're going to go, you know, do the physical, do the drug screen. Mm -hmm. We're going to do, you know, just different things throughout those three days of orientation. And then that fourth day with the mentor load, um, it's a local load out and back that we send you out with somebody that's been with us a while. Okay. We pay you a flat pay for that, but they're really there to answer questions for you and give it to you from a driver's perspective. So you're going to get out there. We're going to have you around the office and yard for three days, and we're going to throw a lot of information at you, and you're going to go turn the key that fourth day, and you're going to be like, who was I supposed to call? Who was I supposed to tell right. this to? So they're really there to kind of walk you through those first steps, get you adjusted to the equipment. If there's something wrong with your, for instance, PeopleNet computer or your APU, they're there to kind of walk through those first steps. So, All right. So, um, so where's the uh so you said oklahoma city oklahoma so yes. i'm assuming that's the the main yes. terminal do you guys have other terminals just that we one? do not we do not feed the children has warehouses throughout the united states our only terminal is here in oklahoma city though so the feed the children warehouses are truly just warehouses they're distribution centers um so none of our management team is located in any of those warehouses what's so the, everything that we do is out of oklahoma city what's the uh what's the percentage of dropping hooks since you guys get that many uh um, warehouses unfortunately it's not a whole lot with feed the children we have lots of drop and hook that's that's a high percentage right um but because of our broker loads and customer loads it's a lot of live loads. those are live loads mm -hmm. okay. unless you're repowering a load for somebody so okay um which we'll do on occasion too if somebody's got to take time off or has an emergency we could have you repower loads so you wouldn't be live loading but you'd be live unloading so so i notice um i notice in my email uh, uh -huh. that you guys offering a two thousand dollar sign on bonus. Yes, how is that how is that paid out? Um it's paid out throughout your first year. It's a sign on and safety bonus. Um and the way that, that is paid out, um I'm pulling up my cheat sheet so I say it right. <laughs> it's uh I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna assume this is is tethered in with it's into preventables, whether it's accidents or incidents. So um, it's paid in four payments. It's $500 every three months that you're with us that first year. So let's say during your first three months you have a preventable incident. Let's say you go out and you hit one of those big boulders that they have at the Walmart parking lot. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. for some reason. Okay, mm-hmm. don't do that, by the way. But it, let's say you do that in your first three months. So that first five hundred dollars would be void, but you would still be eligible for the next three payments of the five hundred dollars, oh, so fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. So, oh, okay. so it doesn't void the entire bonus. We don't want to take the entire bonus away. But if during any of those three month chunks of time during that year you have a preventable, it would affect that one five hundred dollar bonus. I got you. All right. So and you then got- we do. And then we do quarterly bonuses on top of that, and they're performance bonuses. So there's a safety element, obviously. We're looking at fuel mileage. We're looking at hard brakes and idling and high speeds and um, just a lot of different things, inspections. You know, DOT inspections, we're looking at accidents, incidents. So all of those things feed into your performance bonus every quarter, too. And those range anywhere from 0 to $1,100 a quarter. Okay. Um Okay, so you you mentioned uh, you mentioned idle. So what's your guys' idle policy? Um, no more than eight percent idling. Eight percent. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Um, you guys require uh, hair follicles or is it urine? Um, currently it's urine. Um, we're looking into the hair follicle, but currently it's urine. All right. So if I have my DOT card already, uh, we still need to do a physical. Oh, uh, you still need to. Yeah, because every update. doctor and every clinic does it a little bit differently, and um, we have requirements with our workers' comp insurance, so right. we have to meet those guidelines. But we pay, you know, obviously we're going to pay for your drug screen, your DOT physical, um, you know, we're, that's not your expense. We'll pay for your hotel stay, um, give you some money towards meals while you're here in orientation, and then as far as your transportation here goes, if you drive your own vehicle, we'll reimburse you your fuel expenses and any tolls. Um, if you decide to rent a vehicle um, or fly, for instance, um, mm-hmm. we will pay you up to what a Greyhound ticket would have cost. So we can we can bus you here, but most people don't want to take the bus anymore. Yeah, no, don't blame no, you we, at all. no, we 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 so, don't do Greyhound, and especially coming yeah, out to Oklahoma. We're we're yeah, not doing Greyhound. Don't blame you. Don't blame you at all. So um, <laughs> essentially, if you wanted to, if you weren't driving your personal vehicle, you wanted to rent a vehicle or fly, whatever that Greyhound ticket, we would we would look it up and see how much. Like if it was going to be a hundred bucks or whatever, we would give that to you towards your transportation expenses oh, okay what about uh what, what about hotel stays uh do we have we to pay share for the your room? hotel no 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 it's private room oh okay all right yeah yeah all we right. use the best western saddle back in it's just up the road from us less about half a mile from us so. all right we uh, uh is the orientation pay are, are we paid through yes. the orientation yes it's a 150 dollar orientation pay now let me ask you this for whatever reason uh that we might not make it all the way through the orientation do we still get paid for being there and also do you guys give us a way back um we don't give you a way back um as far as um if if you completed the days of orientation like if you showed up for day one and then you disappeared on us Mm -hmm. no because we've got the expenses associated with the drug screen and the physical and all of that Um, if you made it through all three days and then at the end of that we were like you know we're just not feeling it and we cut you loose for some reason Mm -hmm. then yes we would likely pay you unless you just did something outrageous like you know stood on the desk and cussed out our president or something you know we're we're not Um, doing that you know (laughs) (laughs) we're not doing Um, that yeah typically we try to be as honest and fair uh, as possible so we're reasonable and honestly it hasn't come up a whole lot it's been probably a good seven or eight years since we had somebody not complete orientation okay okay all right Hello? Oh, we got disconnected. Sorry about that. We got disconnected. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. You yeah. were talking and then I lost you, so. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Uh, Where were we? You you was talking? Um, talking about um, paying for orientation. If you oh, okay, yes, 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 yep. yes. Yep. All right, so orient, orientation uh, is paid for. And it sounds like orientation lasts for like, what, a week at least? No, That's no, it it's three like. days. It's three Uh, days. Three days? Three days. And then that fourth day we do a mentor load, which you're paid a flat pay in addition to your orientation pay. And then after you're completing that, after your completion of that mentor load, as long as everything went well, um, we dispatch out on your own. So typically the load that you pick up with the mentor is the load you're going to carry on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then they try to, depending on what your needs are, if you need to get back through the house to load up the truck with additional items, if you weren't able to bring everything, they can work to get that first load through 
clear your house for you. Okay, okay. Um, hold on. There we go. Uh, so the CPM, uh, you guys said it's an average of 72,440. 72, that, but that was last year in 2018. So what's the... Right, that, was, the our, that was our fleet average for um, all of our drivers that were actively employed. So oh, that's okay. drivers that, um, you know, I mean, that was all of our drivers on the fleet that had been here all year. So, um, and that's just a, an average that accounting gives us every year. Um, we actually turn that into best fleets to drive for. That's something that they look at to see how we, you know, it's kind of a measuring stick on how we're doing with our driver pay. So what's um, the so, CPM? Um, how many years experience do you have? Four. Okay, four. Uh-huh. And bear with me, i got to pull up my cheat sheet. Not a problem. <laughs> I never want to go off the top of my head because sometimes my brain's not fully functional in the mornings. Um, so we'd be looking at around 45 cents a mile to start. Is that 45 cent base or 45 cent with incentives? Um, that's your 45 cent is your base. Now, any performance bonuses or quarterly bonus, I mean, your quarterly bonus or anything like that would be on top of that. Okay. So the 45 cents a mile is truly 45 cents a mile, whether it's loaded or empty. Um, and then we do have um, per diem built into that rate. Um, so the first nine and a half cents of your 45 cents is non-tax. It's a little so, bit of a tax savings to you. So per diem is mandatory. It is mandatory. Um, and at the oh. end of the year, we'll give you, um, it's called a per diem report right. that you can present to your accountant so that they can um, account for that. Oh, okay, but, um, okay. All right. That so, way, any days worked or whatever, it helps match up. Because typically, because we do a lot of flat pays and um, things throughout the year, um, you're not going to use up all your per diem through per diem pay. Because if you get flat pay, there's no per diem built into a flat pay. Right, it's only right. on your mileage pay. So. All right. Is, uh, is the pay based on straight miles? Which yeah, I believe you just mentioned that. So it is based on straight yeah, miles? It, it's all, yeah, it's all your miles. So it's empty or loaded. It doesn't matter. How's the miles calculated? Um, it's through PC mile or practical route. Oh, okay. 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 Now, if for some reason you had to go out of route, um, if dispatch sent you a different way, if there was, you know, some sort of weather or traffic delay, something like that, that they rerouted you for, or for instance, like going across I-80, um, where you're empty or light loaded, we don't do that up near Rollins, Wyoming, because of high winds. Okay. Um, so if they routed you around for that, we would pay you those additional miles. We wouldn't expect that you'd go additional miles and not be paid. But it would be coordinated through dispatch. You wouldn't just automatically do it and then assume you'd get paid later. Gotcha. We would make sure that dispatch was on the same page with you. So. Gotcha. Uh, do you guys offer pay advances for uh, for uh, weekly, weekly advances? We do. Okay. We do. And okay. it's available on your fuel card. There's $125 available each week. And then if you got into a jam and you needed some additional, we could do up to 75 more. Um, and then as far as tolls and scales, um, dispatch can give you an advance for those things, especially when you're first starting out with us. Okay. Um, but we try to get away from that fairly quickly because we don't want to affect your check every week with that, okay. um, you know, waiting for receipts and things like that. So, so we do. So um, so we do get I'm sorry go ahead I'm I'm sorry for No 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 you're fine. So you're fine. so we do get paid so we do get reimbursed for scales and tolls but what about Absolutely. uh what about uh what about parking uh you know if we have to pay for parking um, if you have to pay for parking, we would have you talk to John, our director of dispatch, or shoot him a message. Typically, we don't, you know, because we're buying fuel or whatever. Um, but there are some locations, especially in the Northeast, where we know that um, you may have to pay for parking on exactly. occasion. So, yes, um, we do want to help out with that. Um, it's not a regular thing. We don't, excuse me, we, um, I don't even think every week here we have <laughs> parking. Um, we have whole weeks where nobody has to pay for parking. So exactly. um, it it just varies. Um, but yeah, you would just work with John on that. Okay. Okay. What about a? Uh, uh, let's see. You guys offer uh, vacation holiday pays. We do. We oh. do. Um, so the holiday we have ten paid holidays throughout the year, and even if you do not take the holiday off, let's say. 
it's Labor Day weekend and you decide you're going to continue on driving that weekend because, you know, most of our drivers don't take off for 10 holidays during the year. Okay. The big ones, obviously, Christmas and Thanksgiving. Right. Um, but um, a lot of times they continue driving throughout the year um, over those holidays. So you still get holiday pay in addition to whatever miles you drove. Okay. Um, and then vacation pay, you start accruing that from your first day out with us. And um, the vacation accrual is based on your years with us. So it goes up over time. Um, and you may have already seen that on our website, how that's listed out. Um, but up to five years of service, you get two weeks per year or 10 days annually. Um, after five years, it goes up to three weeks. After 10 years, four weeks, and so on. Okay. Um, and so the way the vacation and the holiday pay is calculated, what she does is um, she looks at your last 12 months. Now, if you've not been here 12 months, she looks at however long you've been here, up to 12 months. Mm -hmm. And she figures out your average daily pay. So if you're a driver, that the reason that we do that is for drivers that run a lot of miles, you shouldn't be penalized. Um, if we're using a rate where a driver that doesn't run as many miles. So it's really based on what you're used to making in a day um, because we don't want you to have a shortfall just because you took a vacation day. So whatever your average daily pay calculates out to be, that's what she pays you for vacation and for holiday pay. Okay, cool. Uh, what's the, um, well, let's see. I had it right here. Okay, uh, breakdown uh, the 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 normal. You guys offer breakdown, detention, right, layover. Yes, we have detention, layover, breakdown, pay, all of that. And then um, with feed the children loans, there's some additional pays that most trucking companies don't have just because of what we do. So there's event pays um, if you've got to be there four hours, eight hours, um, because sometimes at events and we don't do a lot of events throughout the year, but there may be an event where you're um, you know assisting volunteers. They're doing a food distribution, you're there for a photo shoot, you know, there's a lot of different things that play into events, um, okay. so we want to make sure you're compensated for your time. So there's a lot of different, we, we have a, a very large spreadsheet that has all of our flat pay schedule on it okay. for all the different scenarios, and including breakdown, because there's variables with breakdown. So if you're broken down, you know, a day, or you're broken down two weeks, those are paid differently. So two weeks, obviously, we're going to start paying you at a higher level because of your, your time down. We don't want right. you to be short on pay again. You know, everything that we do, we want to make sure that your paycheck isn't doesn't have a shortfall because of something that's out of your control. Okay, okay, okay. You guys require hazmat? We do not. Okay, so if I do, you guys reimburse for hazmat if I decide to go and get it. If I'm with you guys, we don't because we don't do any hazmat loads. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. How many uh, how many miles I can average a week there? Um, just on a base average, um, it's twenty seven hundred to thirty two hundred miles a week, and that's just a ten week base average for a fleet. Um, there are miles available. Um, Mark, one of our, he's kind of our lead dispatcher. Cheryl is a dispatcher too, but she handles more of the feed the children side. But Mark, um, you know, if you want three to four thousand miles a week, he's going to get you three to four thousand miles a week as long as we can run it safely and legally. He can make it happen. Okay, you guys. Um, all right. So what, 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 what lanes do you guys offer, or do you guys just strictly all forty eight? We're all 48 irregular route carrier because of what we do. Um, you know, Feed the Children has the five warehouses, so obviously we go in and out of those, um, but also we, we truly just run wherever the freight is paying for us to run. So okay. if it's Maine, if it's Florida, if it's Washington State, if it's Oklahoma, Texas, whatever, we're going to do it. Yeah, I, I, that, that's going to be my next question. So are a lot of us me in particular don't like california nor new york or new york city or anything in the northeast but are we forced to take a dispatch load up there um we are under forced dispatch we don't like the terminology oh. forced dispatch. nobody does but um you know they they try not to abuse any one driver for instance if you go to the northeast they try not to hang you out there for weeks at a time or anything. Um, but there are times, um, Feed the Children has a warehouse in Pennsylvania. They also have one in Tennessee and Indiana. So obviously that puts us in those regions. Right. Um, they have one in California, and then the last one is in Oklahoma. So obviously that puts us in some of those regions that you may be less happy with. Um, as far as going into New York City out on the island, 
stuff like that. That's not something that we do on any kind of regular basis. The reason we would do that would be strictly for Feed the Children if there was a need, like a disaster relief or a hunger relief event of some okay. sort. Um, but we do go into New Jersey a lot. We go into Pennsylvania. We're in the Northeast a lot. Um, and we are in California a lot because running in California, obviously, we can get some miles going that way. Exactly. So, um, but we are truly a regular route. We run all over. All right. Uh, so home time. Uh, you did mention uh, you did mention home time. Um, yes. So how how long can I stay out? I mean, what, what's like I know the average is like you know we go home for two days and then come back on the drive. But let's say if I want right. to stay home for a little bit longer than that, what's what's how long can I stay out, or how much um, longer can I stay out? I mean, you could stay out as long as you want. We're not. The only thing about that is we don't want anybody to get burned out. So, um, you know, we have drivers that don't have an established home um, that really their home is, you know, Freightliner way out here. Um, so um, they stay out for months at a time. Um, we have drivers. Um, I have two in particular that, um, you know, they, they may stay out four to six months. Um, that's not the norm and we don't definitely don't expect that um, but if that's something that you like to do then when you take time off you know we're going to take that into account um, we try as far as time off because of us being a small company it's hard for us to have somebody off for a couple of weeks um, but if you were to take a week off or whatever and you've accrued that time that's typically not an issue oh, okay. anything over four days off um, dispatch has to go through either myself or John to get approval on that um, just to make sure that we have coverage again because we're a small fleet we need to make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row so um, exactly. if you have a home time request coming up we have you submit that through PeopleNet there's a, a time off request and um, there's both vacation and just regular time off request that you would put through there um, that way your dispatchers all see that they have it they can make note of it and schedule it and then if they need to get with us on it they can okay okay so I guess we can I, I guess for that matter we we could take the trucks home then right yes they're going to dispatch you to the house the only time that we don't do that um, if you were going to be on an extended time off, let's say you had to take medical leave, um, let's say you were going to go on a two-week cruise to Alaska or wherever, yeah, we, um, to bring we the truck would prefer back. the truck to be parked here. Um, also, if the truck needs extensive work, for instance, it had body damage and needed work, um, or you know, a major. Uh, we don't really have this knock on wood, but like an engine overhaul, we don't really do that. But, you know, we trade the trucks around 500,000 miles. So the mechanical is not usually the problem. Usually it's body damage that we get repaired when a driver's on time off. So if there's any kind of body damage um, that needs attention. Um, but other than that, no, they'll route you through the house and you can take the truck home um, for that time off. Um, but one other note on um, staying out longer than two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, for any drivers that stay out over two weeks, your trips that start after that 14-day mark, we pay you an extra cent per mile for those. It's called an incentive pay. We don't require anybody to stay out that long, but if it's for the drivers that prefer to stay out over two weeks, um, so instead of 45 cents, it would be 46 cents during those times. Oh, okay. And okay. then it resets after you take time off. So once you take time off, then you would reset that clock and start okay. again. I see here that you guys uh, just started a new pet policy. What's, what's the uh, pet and rider policy? <laughs> Um, well, the rider policy we've had in effect for quite a while, um, that's one passenger over the age of 18, and we would need a copy of their photo ID and an authorization through the safety department through me before they go out on the truck. Okay. Um, as far as the pet policy, you are allowed one dog, um, no more than 70 pounds, non-aggressive breeds, um, so we don't want, you know, a a pit bull that's used for dog fights basically nothing right. against pit bulls because i actually like pit bulls but um you know we just want to make sure that's not an aggressive dog the main reason being obviously again because of what we do for feed the children we don't want you in an event and you're out walking the dog and you know how kids are i have kids they do this every time they see a dog they want to rush up on the dog you know oh right. doggy they don't care what kind it is or how big it is um so um, we just want to be careful with that. You would make sure that we have the vaccination record on file at all times and that they're up to date. 
and then there's a $500 non-refundable deposit that goes with having a dog on the truck okay. um, and that's just basically a damage deposit now if you move trucks that transfers with you unless there's damage to the truck so if we put you at a truck and you have a dog from day one and we get that bonus now the the deposit does have to be paid before the dog can be on the truck um, but once that deposit's paid and the dog is on the truck, let's say the dog decides to eat the feet. Um, and then we're going to sell that truck and move you to another truck. Because we had damages, we would have to do a new deposit. But if that truck is pristine and the dog didn't do anything and you've cleaned out, you know, dog hair and, you know, anything else, then that deposit can transfer to the next truck. Oh, okay. Uh, what, are, what are the equipments that you guys have available? Um, we run Freightliner Cascadia's all late model. We have 2015 and newer. Um, our 2015 models are straight 10 transmissions, um, but the rest of them are all automatic. So we only have five straight 10 transmissions left on the fleet. And we're actually looking at selling those right now um, unless I just have a, you know, a bunch of drivers come in and needing trucks, and then we need to use them. But currently I have two automatics um, available. Um, and they're like I said, Freightliner Cascadias, and then we run 53 foot dry vans. So are y'all going? So being that y'all got like five, how many trucks? You said you have total like 30. We have 30. Um, the five that we're selling, um, we will be replacing at some point. Um, so are y'all going? We, we are y'all going I'm fully sorry. automatic, or are y'all going to still have yes. some? Uh, oh, y'all going fully, fully? We're going fully automatic. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So for the amenities, I'm I'm seeing that. Uh, I'm seeing some of the amenities that you guys are offering uh, inside, or it looked like the 19 or the 19s, uh, inverters, refrigerators, and microwaves. Right, those are on the 2019s. That, that's something new that we just started with this last model. Um, I don't have any of those available right now. Now with the other trucks, if you have an inverter you want installed, our, our shop will install it free of charge for you. You're welcome to put those things in, a fridge, a microwave, you know, whatever. Um, but we are, with each truck purchase that we do from here on out, those are things we're equipping with, is the inverter, refrigerator, and microwave. They're just not in or older than the 19 models currently. Do the uh, do the trucks come with driver cams? Um, like a dash cam. Uh, inward facing and outward facing no. driver cam. No, no, oh, no. Okay. no. Um, currently we don't have either. We are looking at outward face facing dash cams. That is coming. Um, as far as inward, that's not something we're looking at right now. Oh, okay, okay, awesome. Because a lot of drivers is not too keen on inward facing cameras. Right. Um, if we were, if we were to ever go to that, which, like I said, that's a huge if, and that's way down the line for us. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually looking at the ones that aren't so much cameras. They're the ones that are looking at the eye line, and they're detecting eye line only. So right. if you're distracted, if you're looking down a lot, it's an alert system for that. But it's not recording like you're, you know, you, I don't know, <laughs> sucking your thumb. I don't, I don't know what to say there. But, I mean, it's not recording other things that are going on in the cab, for or instance. It's just recording, an, or it's just picking up on an eye line because there's technology for that now gotcha. for safety. But we don't, again, that's not something we're looking at currently. It's kind of out of our budget at this point. That would be further down the line. So. All right. So what are the, uh, what are the trucks governing that? They're governed at 65, however, um, we do have both a passing speed and a cruising speed, um, and I may have these flipped. One is 68, one is 67. Um, so the passing speed is available up to 30 minutes a day. It gives you that little extra bump if you need to get around. If you're in truck congestion and everybody's at 65, um, it gives you that little extra bump, and you can use that up to 30 minutes in a 24-hour period in a day. Okay. Um, and then the cruising speed, if you are um, using your cruise control, um, and I don't have the details in front of me, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what the percentages are, but for um, using your cruise control as recommended, um, that gets you up to, I believe, 68 miles an hour. Okay, okay. Uh, what is, can you go into detail about the FIT system, NCAP Fitness by Rolling sure. Strong? What is sure. that? Um, the FIT system, it's um, basically a band system. It hooks in. We, we can, um, if they're not already in the truck that you get assigned, we can install them. But they are little hooks that basically the little, I forgot what they're called, the little 
kind of like what they use for climbing those little hooks. Okay. Um, they attach they attach um, these elastic bands that have handles on them, and there's different tensions on them. So there's different they call them different weights or tensions. Um, so there's like three different bands sets of bands, um, but they um, you can hook them into the back wall of the sleeper okay. and also into the floor down by the driver's and passenger's seat belts okay. um, where those are in the floor and it's resistance bands essentially and so there's a lot of different exercises and workouts that you can use those okay. for. Okay. So, so that's what that is. Actually okay. most, of our tri- yeah, most of our drivers are using them at this point. They like them because so, okay. it kind of gives you some stretching and flexibility. So uh, I see you guys have a, uh, I see you guys have a variance of a uh of uh insurance uh what's the what's the amount of of payment uh that comes out of the out of the pay every week for a single for a single person um i can get jennifer for you she's our controller our um our benefits lady's out today sick um but i can get her for you here in just a second to kind of outline that a little bit better um essentially what we do um we have blue cross and blue shield for a major medical and we have what's called marketplace, but it's not the government marketplace. That one, it's um, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. They have a marketplace where you can actually shop your in- your health insurance coverage. Okay. So it's all through Blue Cross Blue Shield, but basically it's set up so you can say, okay, I'm single, and I want to pay a lower premium, and it's okay if I have a higher deductible or. I need a low deductible and I'm willing to pay a higher premium to get it, you know, or I need this kind of coverage or that kind of coverage. So basically what she's going to do in um, orientation, our benefits lady, she's going to give you information to log in and you can shop through those benefits. And the way that it works is you go in online and you can change it. You keep changing it until you see what you like and the, the, do- the dollar amounts you like as far as premiums go. And then we do contribute towards your um, premiums, which is why I want you to talk to Jennifer um, because she can give you those amounts. I don't have them in front of me. Oh, okay. Um, but we contribute to your, we, we give you basically an allowance to use towards premiums, whether it's health or dental or life insurance. So for instance, I'm covered under my husband's health insurance, so I don't have health insurance right, here. Right, through the company. But because we, have, because we have a little bit of an allowance, I use my allowance Um, towards life insurance so I have some life insurance policies through the company Um, so there's different allowance amounts so there's a there's one for health insurance and then there's one for like dental life disability so um, when I've answered all your other questions I'm going to get you with Jennifer so she can go through yeah you yeah 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 that was pretty cool Uh, I appreciate I appreciate the time on on um, on the questions Uh, the C uh, not the C but the um, the 401k it says yes. here is is match and when do it start um you can um or uh, is that a question you can start contributing well oh. it, it, she will probably answer it better than i will um you can start contributing to 401k immediately okay. um i think the company match does not start till one year i believe but i could be wrong I could be wrong on that. Let me have her answer that question for you because I don't want to be wrong. Um, But I know that at, um, you know, at one year they're matching 50% up to, because you can do 5% um, or you can contribute as much to your 401k as you want. They're only going to match up to that first 5%. So let's say just from my math skills, (laughs) let's say that you're paid $1,000 this week. And so 5% of that is $50. So you want to put $100 in there. They're only going to match up to that first 50. And so your first year of employment, they match 50% up to that 5%. Five years, 75%. And I'm not explaining this very well. (laughs) As I'm saying it, I'm realizing how confusing what I'm saying is. Um, So I'm going to have Jennifer cover that with you as well. Well, well, Emery, listen, thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate you going over everything. Uh, this no is, this this is a lot to take in and a lot to think about. I'm also in the Facebook group as well, so I will send the same okay. information that you uh, send me in the email, and the same information that we uh, talked about. I would let them know as well. This sounds awesome. this sounds like a, a a good company to uh to jump on with and to uh and to uh work for. So. Well, and let me tell you too, if you do hire on, you know, obviously the sign-on bonus would go into effect for you, but if you hire on 
even in orientation and you bring somebody with you or you we wind up hiring somebody that you refer to us even through the Facebook group or whatever mm -hmm. if they heard about it through you and we wind up hiring them we have referral bonuses available for you okay. um, and they'll still get their sign-on bonus but you would get a driver referral bonus for anybody you bring to us and there's no limit on those so it's if info, you bring us info. 20 drivers not that I can house 20 drivers right now but if you brought us several drivers we you know and we were able to hire them then we're going to pay you for that all right so the young lady that you're about to bring on now what's her name and what's she about to go her over? name is her name is Jennifer she's our controller here and I'll have her cover insurance and 401k with very you. very good very good thank you okay no problem hang on just one second all right Jennifer hello Jennifer how you doing this is uh LaShine I was just transferred over to you from Emory yes yes you have some questions yeah she wanted you to go over the uh the uh, benefits and the 401k with me okay um, basically your 401k it starts um, you can start um, I'm not normally the person that does this so I kind of have to look it up <laughs> so let me look <laughs> you can she's out sick Jolie is um, the 401k I believe is starting the day you start here okay. you can start contributing if it's not because I'm not familiar, it's 30 days. I know with the health insurance, it's 30 days. Okay. So, um, and it's not like the first full month past your 30 days. It's truly 30 days. Okay. So if you were to start, you know, in the middle of the month, it would truly be that. Um, 30 days. That next, <laughs> that next 30 days. And then we have health insurance is through Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's of Oklahoma, but they take it nationwide because we have drivers all over the country. Um, our dental insurance is through um, Delta Dental of Oklahoma, but most, I mean, that's pretty much a nationwide company as well. Okay. Um, 401k is through nationwide, so the company will contribute after you've been here. Oh, goodness sake. Let me see here. I have to always look it up. I know you're 100% vested after five years, but I think it's after one year the company okay. will start contributing, and it's up to 5%. Okay. Um, and then um, we have a health savings plan, health savings account. If you want an HSA account, we have an FSA account. So whatever the IRS maximum is for the year, I think this year is 2650. You can contribute to. Um, we have identity theft, mm -hmm. um, like prepaid legal type services. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we offer most of the standard benefits. Your vacation starts right away. You right. start accruing it from that. day one. Um, you get ten, nine or ten paid holidays, depending on how the year falls. Yeah, um, so even if you're too. out on the road, you get you can get the holiday pay and still be driving still be driving okay okay yeah. so uh, so so how much how how much how much a week for a single person it's we have five different plans and let me look and so i can see kind of by you can just some of our <laughs> single drivers i'm trying to see because it's not very much. I mean, oh, it's okay. like twenty-five dollars or less per pay period. It okay. depends on which plan you pick. Exactly. So the company contributes up to seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. I think it is towards your medical, and then fifty dollars towards all the ancillary benefits, which are like dental, life insurance, okay, I, um, I med, which is our eye insurance. Um, the only thing they won't contribute towards is your FSA because they're not allowed to per gotcha. IRS regulations. Gotcha. But, I mean, for a single person, it's cheap if you pay anything at all. It just kind of depends on the plan. Gotcha. Um, we're going to be, so if you were to start now, you could get health insurance after 30 days and it'll carry you through the end of the year. Otherwise, we do open enrollment start, that takes effect January 1. We do that in beginning of November. Okay. So, but I mean, very, I mean, it's real easy to do and signing up for our benefits. Blue Cross Blue Shield, we never have a problem. So, All right. pretty straightforward. 
Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, to, to go over the benefits and the uh, and the 401k with me. I really do appreciate a, that. Not uh, a problem. Did again, you have any other questions no, for Emery? You, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Uh, I just, uh, I would just uh, feed, you know, feed all the, you know, process all this and, uh, uh-huh. and uh, you know, take it over take it with me over to my Facebook group and right. let them know that I talked to Emery uh-huh. and you guys and it's, uh-huh. it looks like that this is a a pretty a pretty good straightforward trucking company so right we yeah. are we're great All <laughs> right. we love our drivers so we treat you like you're a family you know always concerned and everything else so all right. Okay. Well, thank well, you, if you very have any much, other ma'am. Questions? Give us a call. All right. I, I will do that. I will do that. Thank you very much, and you have a blessed okay. day. All right. You too. Be careful. All right now. Yo. So, what you guys think of that call right there? FTC Transportation. Feed the children. Transportation. I mean, I like I said, I haven't heard of them. I haven't even seen their trucks. But come to find out that they're they are a small i'm talking 30 trucks Woo! 30 trucks their turnover rate is less than zero you know what i'm saying so wow but uh ftc feed the children definitely you know you'll see them out there in disasters uh help feeding the homeless help feeding the children you know doing a lot of doing a lot of good things out there ftc Feed the children. Transportation. So, what do you guys think? You guys interested? Yo, why don't you give Emery a call and chop it up with her? Great information. Great conversation. This probably might be another long call, but she went over a lot of information. And, um, and yeah. It's not much more I can say. Yo, if you like yo, if you like more videos like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more. And hit that bell for more. That's the only way you guys are gonna know when I pop up. You know what I'm saying? If y'all don't hit that notification bell. So, oh, and by the way, hook a brother up with some coffee, man. I love coffee. It's a lot of but anyway, get your suggestions in now for the next call, all right? Let me know who you want me to talk to. If you have any questions, leave that in the comments below. You want me to call somebody? Leave that in the comments below. Get at me in the Gmail at LockoutMen and get at me at my Instagram at LockoutMen. You guys take it easy and I'll chat with you guys in another Make the Call video. Y'all know who I am. Peace.